This is Battersea's 160th anniversary year. I just can't believe that we've been here for 160 years and helped over 3 million animals. Mary made a promise to that dog that she would never walk past another one, and she didn't. And from that little dog, the first little dog, stems all the other dogs, the millions of dogs, that have been looked after for the first 160 years. Mary then created, with a small band of volunteers, what she first called the temporary home for lost and starving dogs. And therein begins the legend. Battis's long history of animal rescue can be found in the archives. But a picture of Mary has never been discovered. Mary Tilby really invented rehoming. This is the first illustration of Battersea, eight years after the foundation. It gives you an idea of the range of dogs that were looked after by the home. In 1862, two years after they were founded, they made the resolution that they would never turn a dog away. And this is the case today for cats as well, of course. As a great British institution and national treasure, we've always had friends in high places. Queen Victoria herself became patron in December 1885. So that was, of course, the ultimate stamp of approval for the home. It will give the Queen much pleasure to become the patron of the dog's home and I am to add that Her Majesty will subscribe £10 a year to the funds of the institution. Over the years we've had some amazing supporters and obviously our patrons too, so even from Queen Victoria and the Queen and now the Duchess of Cornwall, but we really rely heavily on the general public. Without them, we wouldn't be doing what we do now. Battersea receives no government funding. It's only because of public support that we're able to keep transforming the lives of rescue animals turning them from underdogs into top cats. Whether it's pandemics or world wars or air raids or all the rest of it, life goes on at Battersea. Dogs and cats need looking after and we do the looking after. We now have state-of-the-art clinics, on-site veterinary staff who are able to provide that care, but we're essentially providing the love and a refuge and asylum for those dogs in exactly the same way that Mary tried to do 160 years ago. It's hard to believe that Bats has been around for 160 years, but come to think of it, I've been here for 30 years, which sort of gives it some kind of perspective. Although we can do so much more for dogs than we did when I first started, I would really say that the heart and soul of Battersea has remained the same throughout. What are we without the people that work here? We're not just a set of buildings or a set of values. It's people. Battersea has always attracted such a diverse range of people. What do they have in common? Just a commitment and a desire to help animals. So the future of Battersea is just as promising and just as exciting as the last 160 years have been. We never stop here. We are full on, flat out. The work never goes away. The animals never stop needing us and Battersea will always be here for them. Mary Tilby would be extremely proud of what she started. I think there'd be a little twinkle in her eye. It's 160 years on and Battersea is still here for every dog and cat. Since 1860, Battersea has cared for over 3 million dogs and cats. Battersea has truly championed the rescue animal, campaigning for their rights, loving their imperfections and giving them the best chance of a happy home.
So right now, I want to say my thanks, my respect to all the staff and volunteers. You don't only change the lives of the animals that come into your care, but you enrich the lives of people that are lucky to welcome those animals into their home. As an ambassador of Battersea, I am so proud that Rescue has and always will be my favourite breed. Sum up Battersea for me and one line. I tell you what, dangerous, because I keep taking me work home with me, as you can see. No, my Arthur. Hey? Yeah. We can't imagine our lives without Battersea, or the lives of animals in need without Battersea. So, for us, Battersea forever.